clientes. Ahorita mismo. Vamos a ver. 11 y 23. Tenemos a Carmen, Andrea, Diego, Aarón, Isabela, Teresa, Franceli, Luis, Martínez, Lisset y Ana. Entonces, rapidito. Les voy a compartir aquí para que vayamos avanzando. Mister, disculpe. Dígame. Eh, dice a Ana que la cámara de ella ahorita no está funcionando, tiene problemas. Ah, ok, está bien. Solo antes de, de seguir, eh, me voy a cerrar la puerta de aquí del cuarto porque si entra el sol se ve muy feo. Me estorbo, yo voy. Qué guapo que soy. Muy bien. Eh, sentences classified by function. That's on page 330. On to page 333. Okay. Just those pages for the first topic. Okay. Let's begin with a short, short definition about this. And we have that a simple sentence is the one that consists of just one independent clause. For example, the prisoner escaped. That is a simple sentence. Remember, we can do sentences with a compound subject. For example, the prisoner and his friend escaped. So here we have the picture of both criminals running away. Or with a compound a predicate, predicate or compound verb. Here we have the prisoner and his friend escaped for a word letter cut. So this is just an introduction by function are the interrogative exclamatory ends. You know that says the state ideas or something and the period in the questions and and the interviews and they the period or an exclamation mark. And so strong feelings and they end an exclamation mark. You can read them. The movie store or later on in the morning, our time a party on Friday. This part of the census. The sentences, they ask questions with the question mark as the end mark. During the light of, or the, what is your favorite job? Or have you been in, in other friends? And what is your example of the world? Very long story sense. So, the answer of the census, you more, you can say the questions. We have the questions in which we only have options. Yes, no. Are you ready to go? Yes, yeah. I'm ready to go. The only answer is no, I didn't know. So, that is number one to answer with these interrogative sentences. Chocolate ice cream, for example. Or should I call you or email? I think you should call me. Or I think you should email me. So yeah, this is alternative questions you answer. Interactive or page or information questions. Again, what, when, where, why, how? Or what are you doing? Or which ones do you like best? Or uh, what is your favorite TV show? Questions like that. Or what could be the alternative? The opposite of the one that you want to be positive. He said, "You live in the city, don't you? We need to get going. Um, we need to get going now, don't we? She's your friend, isn't she? You're right, are you? Um, uh, Diego is blinking, isn't he? Right. So those are things like." That question <laughs> says, remember they give orders or commands. We can have two types of commands, strong or mild. But before that, remember the subject. The objects in these sentences are some, most of the time implicit, not explicit. I understand the subject is always you because you are requesting something, a favor or something like that. For example, one piece, tie my shoes. The doctor says, oh, you know, it's for you. So you open your mouth. For instance, of your homework, or do you tend to you say to you the names? We use commas. Uh, Mark, do homework. Uh, wake up. Or we can have, please open your books. Uh, students, open your books. Up. These are the sentences. All of the sentences you do. I mean, the boy is the boy. Of course, count or request. Please leave it. Leave. Or with instruction from the function of your books, be quiet. Now we have the cases in which we're looking for students to write comments. Now it's enough. It becomes true. Then there are sentences. What is the question? I can't hear exclamatory sense. And that reason says they or express strong feelings in the end. Example four. Have you wish someone had heard with the exclamation mark? That is a truth for me. Not just with rose. Okay, exclamatory sentences. We have very easy ways to do it. But first, words. After we use noun phrases, the pronoun, the pronoun, okay, what's the pronoun phrase has three elements. 
just three entries, you must have the indefinite article a or an plus an added to the noun. And the article again is the student. Say, for example, you have for example, what student is, what he has, how many he has, how much is, how much is, how much is. Again, if we're going to use what, we, we need a noun phrase. And if we're going to use how, just the additive. Okay, let's continue with examples. What a beautiful day. I'm angry. You did a great job. I love the color of the room. You won the prize. That is a huge way. Cierra la puerta. Okay. Now we have here exclamatory sentences to express joy, surprise, love, and anger. Joy, I'm free. Or surprise, wow, she actually won. Or for love, I treasure you. Or I love you. I miss you. Or with anger, you are late again. With Daniel, you're late again. Okay, to express anger. So here we have more examples. <laughs> no, here we have urgency, emotions, and feelings. For example, watch out for the car for emergency to prevent an accident. I love the movie. It's an it's an emotion. That is a thing. This topic is to find sentences. You can find the full topic on pages 335 until page 339. So how can we combine sentences? Okay, number one, we can compound, combine subjects, the verbs, or the objects. And the combination is compound subject, compound verb, or compound object. I'm going to show some examples, like Joe enjoyed seeing the trains. That is one sentence. Number two, Martha enjoyed seeing the trains. So I can combine the subjects, Joe and Martha, in a full sentence, I enjoyed seeing the trains. So this is the subject. Okay, it's very easy. On verbs, it's when we combine two actions in one sentence. Lisa, Lisa took a seat on the city bus. So I combine these two sentences. I'm going to say that Lisa paid the driver and took a seat on the city bus. And this is an example of a compound verb. This a pay the driver. Paid is the past simple of pay. And Daddy. took is the past simple of take. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we have an off is the last part of the sentence. We have the teacher received the assignment, received the test. So I can combine these sentences and say in a full sentence, the teacher received the assignment and the test. Is a compound this is the second part of this topic. Compound subjects, compound verbs, and compound objects. We're going to combine sentences. Okay, um, I, didn't, I didn't write the, the number of the page, but you can find it in a row. Sentences can be combined by using two independent clauses. Okay, remember independent clauses, they are joined by conjunctions, like and, but, or, yet, is, uh, or so. Uh, we can also combine them with commas or columns or semicolons. For example, the line went patiently, period. It's pretty kept moving closer. That, we in, that is an example of two separated sentences separated by, by a period. Or columns or semicolons, for example. The lion waited patiently, so it's pretty kept moving closer. Now, it, the conjunction so is joining the two sentences. I don't wait patiently, and it's very kept moving. Now we have combining sentences with separate clauses. Separate clauses is the opposite of independent clauses. They depend on something else. So I can create, I can use two sentences separated by a period, but make one of them subordinate clauses. How do I do this? Okay, when I do this, I create a complex sentence. Remember last week with complex sentences, complex sentences, independent clause plus a uh, one or more subordinate clause. For example, we were writing, we thought the lion we, we saw on the safari was hungry. We thought, we thought the lion we saw on safari was hungry. So now it has been changed to us to so use the word. We can use when, where, uh, while, as, etc. So the second sentence was changed into a subordinate clause. The ones that begin with that, with which, who, whom, where, when, etc. I use because. I can use after and so on. We use the word in the and book into conjunctions. So I can use this to combine uh, to combine sentences, and we must revise them to clarity. Things dependent on service industries. Period. The second sentence is agriculture also plays a role. So I'm going to use one a subordinate conjunction 
in this sentence, I'm using the word of the family is dependent on the trees, made just by omitted a comma here. Obviously, I'm at the comma, I don't need the capitalization, it's so it. Así que, así rapidito, recordemos que hacer una en este caso fue culture is also important. The phrase, preposition phrases, remember the preposition and the object in the morning, at noon, after classes, before dusk, and many others. Then this classes and the movie. I complete it with a phrase. It's a preposition of after classes, we're going to see the movie. Or I can use a positive phrases. The inventor of the light bulb, the only on the field team. Remember the positive phrase is the one that describes or identifies the subject in the sentence. For example, just like, like last week, Edison, the inventor of the light bulb is considered the best inventor of his time. So here we have this positive phrase that defines Edison. Or participle phrases. We have present participle and past participle. que si es present participle, usa ing. Y si no usa pasado, pasado participle. They say hidden in the grass. Hidden is the past participle of hide. Or speaking out, speaking is, is the present participle of hurt. Is the past participle of hurt. Hurt show, speak out in grass. The first one, hidden in the grass, the cat waited for his prey. So I, I used three types of phrases. Prepositions, other phrases, and part of phrases. You can use the last week video to recall what phrases are, or what type of phrases or pre, um, a positive phrases are. Okay, let's see. Here we have we can sentences by adding a conjunction. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to make a compound sentence in this example. We didn't like the movie. We left before it ended. So, Diego, how can I combine these two sentences using a conjunction? Which conjunction do you think is the best to use in this case? So. So, so there we are. We didn't like the movie. We didn't like the movie. So, we left before it ended. Okay, excellent. Number two, combine the sentences by changing one of them into a subordinate clause. So, eh, Luis Fer, ¿qué usaría aquí Luis Fer, para combinar las dos usando una subordinate clause? Haciendo uh -huh. la segunda oración, haciéndola una subordinate clause. Uy, que hay de la respuesta aquí. ¿Qué usaría aquí? Dice, there are eight species of tigers, three of them are already extinct. Eh, podríamos poner, dijo, there are three tigers that are already extinct. ¿Cómo dijo? Perdón. No, vamos a usar, vamos a convertir la segunda oración en una subordinate sí. clause, una que depende de la primera, la que dice there are eight species sí. of tigers, esa la dejamos limpia, pero oh. tenemos que agregarle algo más aquí a, donde dice three of them are already extinct para hacerla subordinada. Ajá. Uh -huh, um... That doesn't exist. That or, or that already no, doesn't exist. That's, bueno, sí. Pero algo que, vamos a ver. Yo ya he usado although y lo voy a poder usar aquí. Fíjate bien. Uh -huh. Dice, there are eight species of tigers, although three of them are already extinct. O podemos usar también aunque aquí. Aunque es, mister. Aunque, aunque. Uh -huh. There are eight species of tigers, although three of them are already extinct. Igual, ya saben dónde están las, mm -hmm. estas que se llaman eh, supporting conjunctions, para que ustedes las puedan ver. Página 259, creo que les dije. Para que ustedes puedan ir agregando las aquí las relaciones. Vamos a ver. Add a prepositional phrase to the sentence. The people started to feel tired. Lisette, ¿qué usaría aquí, Lisette? Dice, a prepositional phrase. The people started to feel tired. Por lo general, usamos antes de la oración. La frase. ¿Qué pondremos aquí? Ay, no sé, mister. A prepositional phrase, Lizet. No, mister, no. Yo ese tema me cuesta. ¿Por qué? O sea, sí lo entiendo, pero me cuesta pensar. <risa> Mira, acuérdense que prepositions pueden ser on, in, after, before. Piensa en una que, que justifique el por qué estaban cansadas las personas de esto. Nada, Lisa. Le voy a ayudar entonces. No. Mire, dice aquí, ve. After three hours, the people started to feel tired. 
after is the preposition, three hours is the object of the preposition. So I added a prepositional phrase. Allí está. De acuerdo. Okay. Sí. okay. Add a positive phrase to the sentence. A positive sentences are the ones that describe the subject. The subject in this sentence is William Shakespeare wrote many other plays. So, Franceli, can you give me a positive phrase for this sentence? Mm. Algo que a ustedes mm. se, se le venga a la mente y diga, ah, esto describe a William Shakespeare en, un, en una frase. ¿Qué, qué le pondría? Así como yo puse Edison, the inventor of the light bulb. ¿Qué le ponemos aquí? William Shakespeare. Ajá. Pero positivo. Ah, ay, no sé por qué. <risa> No, pero, no. Piense, cuando piense en Shakespeare, ¿qué obra se le viene primero de él? Un nombre de, un, de una historia. Ajá, por ejemplo. Romeo y Julieta. Ajá, entonces empiece bien, ¿ve? aquí diríamos. ¿ve? Eh, William Shakespeare, the author of Romeo and Juliet, coma, wrote many other plays. So aquí tenemos, William Shakespeare, the author of Roman Judith, wrote many other plays. Remember the action of the positive phrase is backwards. It's describing Pero. William Shakespeare. ¿Entendió, Franceli? ¿Cómo es? Sí. Ajá. Yo puedo decir, ve. Uh, usando ahí a Messi. O sea, a Messi, vaya. Messi, coma, the best player in the world, coma, is from Argentina. Podemos ponerla ahí, vaya. <laughs> bueno. Qué buenísimo. Se mamó. <laughs> o, okay. o Messi, uh, el ganador de los cinco balones de oro. No, seis. 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 Sí. Entonces, ahora tenemos aquí a participle phrase. Acuérdense, si es present participle, voy a usar, por ejemplo, ing, speaking, o si es el pasado participio, spoken. Fíjense bien, aquí yo tengo esta oración que dice, the mouse ran, ran through the living room. Ok, I'm going to use a past participle, frightened. Frightened by the cat, comma, the mouse ran through the living room. In present participle, jumping on the garden, the mouse ran through the living room. Entonces, aquí usamos pasado participio, que es presente participio. Okay. Frightened and jumping. Pregunta, eh, Mr. Uh -huh. ¿a qué hora empezó a compartir pantalla? Uy. ¡Qué barbaridad! Sí. ¡Sáquelo, mister! ¡Sáquelo! ¡Sáquelo! ¡No, no, no! ¡No, no! ¡Sáquelo! ¡No, no! 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 ¡No, si queremos ver al líder, no ponga Bueno, terminemos con esto para que veamos esto que dice. Eh, ¿Por qué se llama este participial phrases? Porque usamos un participio, ya sea, ya sea presente o pasado. Aquí usé los dos. Running by the cats, past participle. And jumping in the garden is present participle. Ah, Lífer. <ríe> ok. Tenemos algunas preguntas aquí con, con Grammar. Si no, pues, ya saben no. que va a estar... La, va a la ser verdad, las tareas son para hoy, ¿verdad, mister? Sí. Ahora, mister, miren, ve. Para hoy. 